basically mistakes were made. I was trying to be too clever with long exposure techniques that didn't need a 60 second exposure or longer. Sometimes it's easy to over-engineer an image concept. And this happened to me recently when I came here to photograph the Carrig Cock Dam in Mid Wales. Following on from my long exposure video of the bridge, which you can uh, watch after this video, I'll put a link up here somewhere, um, and I'll also link it in the description below. I decided that this dam should be my next large scale engineering image. So knowing that there's a lot of water around at the moment, because we're in winter now, and Wales in winter is notorious for rain, a lot of rain. And when it rains a lot, the water gathers in the dam and it overflows. It flows over the top of the dam, cascading down into the river. It's meant to, it's channeled that way by the water authorities. So that's why I thought this might make another good long exposure image but it's also where I started to overcomplicate the process of that image. Now, when you get an enormous amount of water, such as here, flowing down that dam, it actually creates a real, uh, an enormous amount of airflow. Now, combine that airflow with the regularly windy conditions that Mid Wales experiences during the winter, and when you stand on the bridge, you get hit in the face by a real blustery conditions, which is the combination of that, the water creating that airflow through from the dam, plus the windy conditions coming through the valley, because we're in, we're in a valley here, and it creates quite a force of wind and air coming at you. But of course, it's not just the wind. Because that water's cascading down, the water droplets are in the air and they're being, being caught in the wind, and they're coming into the camera. So now you're gonna get an idea of what's gonna be the issue here, aren't you? Now, of course, for humans with the right clothing, a bit of dampness isn't an issue, but a camera with a filter on the front of the lens is another matter. So of course, it's not just the wind that's buffeting the camera, which is on a tripod, but also those water droplets are hitting that filter on the front of the lens. Now, of course, the 60 second exposure is quite a long time for water to be hitting that filter and you can't wipe that filter clean halfway through an exposure. Now, as it happens during, uh, I think I took four exposures on that first day I came here, I did actually get one stable image where the wind had died down just enough um, and the water droplets only hit a fraction of the filter and it doesn't actually create that much of an issue on the final image, but it's not perfect and again, I think what I've done is overcomplicated the concept. Basically, I was a fool. I was trying to be too clever. How could I have been so careless? I mean, look, look how much water is flowing over the dam. Do I really need a 60 second exposure to capture motion in a still image? Of course I don't. So I'm back. And I'm gonna be honest, this is the third attempt at coming back here to redo the image because Weather apps have been telling me that I'm expecting some clear skies and calm winds. And the weather apps have been lying to me because for the last two times I've been, it's been absolutely chucking it down. Everywhere around the, the valley, lovely, perfect. But the valley, where the dam is, where I want to take a photo, was absolutely tipping down basically for the last week that I've been trying to come here. So instead of the Lee Filters Big Stopper, which is a 10 stop filter, I used a Polar Pro ND64, which is a six stop filter, and it's also a polarizer, so I can take some of the glare off of that water. But that basically made my exposure a lot more manageable at eight seconds, which meant I was able to uh, take a few exposures just to make sure I didn't get any wind buffeting the camera, so I didn't get any movement whilst it was on the tripod. And also, the water droplets didn't collect on the lens, uh, sorry, on the filter quite so much, and I was able to keep that a lot cleaner. So the overall image is a lot cleaner. And also the, with the f-stop being quite high, so I think it's around about f-14, f-16, that gave a lot of depth of field. It gave a lot of sharp focus to those parts on the, on the dam itself that 
are in shadow a bit more and I was able to lift those shadows a bit more and you could see the de details in those uh, the fixtures on the dam at the bottom there. I've made the image a lot more simple, I've made the capturing of the image more simple and it's created a better image by not overcomplicating a technique and a method. I've created a better image. It has taken me three attempts to get here when it's not raining, when it's not blowing a gale through the valley, but I've got here. So here's the moral of the story. Don't overcomplicate your images when you don't need to. Don't try to be clever just for the sake of being clever. And you've got the equipment, you must use it. You don't have to use all the equipment. Trying to be clever just for the sake of showing how clever you are, your knowledge, sometimes backfires. And I'm gonna hold my hand up here because that's exactly what I did. Because there was no need to go that slow, and have that long exposure to capture that amount of water coming down the dam and flowing through the river. So enjoy this image and I'll link the final high res image on my website in the description below. And stick around and enjoy another video of mine. Thanks for watching.